Thanks for joining us. We are eager to share the progress of Imagine Boston and continue the conversation about the future of our city. As you may know, Imagine Boston 2030 will be the first citywide plan completed in 50 years. Today, Boston is growing as a thriving, healthy, and innovative city. This growth gives us a chance to set the course for the next generation. Through Imagine Boston, we have an opportunity to grow inclusively and ensure that all Bostonians have access to opportunity. With Imagine Boston, planning for our city's growth will be shaped by the ideas and visions of those who live, work, and play here. Through open houses, suggestion boxes in local libraries, text messages, email, social media, and dozens of visioning sessions, you told us about the opportunities and challenges created by the city's recent growth and identified priorities for the city's future, including housing I can afford, better transportation options, and quality education for all. We'll talk more about all of those priorities as we discuss how Imagine Boston can work to make our city stronger and more inclusive. As those of you who engaged with us this fall and winter know, this is just the beginning of an engagement process that will take us through the publication of a citywide plan in spring 2017. As we move forward with the plan, we need your input on where and how Boston should preserve, enhance, and grow. To begin that conversation, we want to look back and understand how Boston came to this moment of growth and what makes this plan unique. The change in the city's fortunes has been stark. In the latter half of the 20th century, Boston was a struggling northeastern city in decline. We lost 60% of our core manufacturing employment between 1969 and 2000, and over 30% of our population between 1950 and 1980. This type of decline wasn't unusual. We saw similar losses in Baltimore and Philadelphia, but Boston's population loss was particularly notable. Boston's decline was the result of a variety of factors, including deindustrialization that occurred across the nation, nationwide suburbanization trends that led to three consecutive decades of population growth in the Commonwealth while the city of Boston lost residents, and a local race relations crisis that precipitated additional population loss. However, beginning in the 1980s, Boston's tides began to turn, and by the 2000s, Boston entered a league of dynamic, knowledge-driven peer cities. Like Boston, these cities have highly productive knowledge economies that are concentrated in several growing industries, enabling them to attract new workers and residents. As we think about the drivers of Boston's growth, our strength in the education and healthcare sectors has been critical to supporting steady jobs and population growth. But it isn't just business and industry that have made Boston an attractive place to work and live. The neighborhood fabric of Boston and the sports and cultural institutions that are core to Boston's identity have also made this an exciting city for new companies and residents. In recent years, our growth has been particularly strong. Our population grew 6% between 2010 and 2014, nearly twice the rate of the nation. We've seen that regional growth rate slowing a bit over the past two years, but we're still growing faster than many other metro areas, including New York City. Over the same time period, our jobs grew by 7%, again exceeding national growth. We feel this growth every day when we ride the T, when we look at the city's skyline, and when we search for new jobs. While this growth creates enormous opportunities for the city, persistent challenges remain. When we talked with Bostonians this winter and fall, we heard about these challenges and priorities to address them in the future, including providing affordable housing, creating better transportation options, and providing quality education for all Bostonians. As we think about Boston's future, we need to leverage the benefits that growth provides to address our challenges and make Boston more inclusive. We can do this by constructing new housing units and commercial space to address rising demand and help keep real estate prices in check so a wider range of residents and businesses can afford to stay in Boston. We can encourage continued growth in Boston's leading industries, such as healthcare, which provides jobs at a variety of skill levels. We can provide space throughout the city where creative, innovative industries can grow and attract other companies, jobs, investment, and opportunity. And finally, as a city that relies on property taxes for approximately two-thirds of the revenue it needs to fund schools, public safety, and services, this growth means that we have more revenue to support these critical functions and make investments that will make Boston stronger and more inclusive in 2030 and beyond. As we consider how we can guide growth inclusively, Imagine Boston has proposed four goals that reflect the input from Bostonians about the city's challenges and opportunities. 
These goals are provide quality of life in accessible neighborhoods, drive inclusive economic growth, promote a healthy environment and adapt to climate change, and invest in infrastructure, open space, and culture. As we think about Boston's future, providing quality of life in accessible neighborhoods is critical. Today, high cost of living and rising housing prices threaten Boston's vibrant, diverse, and growing neighborhoods. Through Imagine Boston 2030 and Housing a Changing City, the city's housing plan, we will develop strategies to keep Boston affordable and create vibrant, complete neighborhoods. We can look to other cities as examples of what might be possible for Boston's neighborhoods. In San Diego, the East Village, an area that was once the home to warehouses and abandoned lots, has recently become a vibrant urban mixed-use district with significant market and affordable housing development. These housing developments occurred alongside investment in public amenities, such as the Central Library and Petco Park, making the East Village San Diego's largest and fastest growing inclusive neighborhood. Another critical goal for our future is driving inclusive economic growth. Today, persistent poverty and educational disparities limit many Bostonians' ability to benefit from the opportunities of the city's knowledge economy and growing industries. We see the impact of this growing wealth gap and enduring poverty when we look at disparities between neighborhoods and races. It is critical that Imagine Boston encourage growth that is inclusive and benefits all Bostonians. As we consider how we can drive inclusive economic growth, we can look to examples like Industry City a six million square foot former industrial campus on the Brooklyn waterfront in New York City, which is being redeveloped as a dynamic innovation and manufacturing community. Industry City's Innovation Center provides training and job placement to equip local residents with the skills needed to access innovation economy jobs at Industry City and elsewhere. Our third goal is to promote a healthy environment and adapt to climate change. We face growing risks as a coastal city. While planning for future risks will be challenging, Boston has a history of thinking big to address environmental challenges like greenhouse gas reduction and cleaning up the harbor. Through Imagine Boston, we must continue this type of big thinking to address climate change and encourage a healthy environment. We can look to other waterfront cities as examples of how Boston can adapt to climate change. Hafen City in Hamburg, Germany is a former port area that is being redeveloped as a 400-acre mixed-use neighborhood with 14,000 residents and 45,000 jobs. Waterfront promenades and parks step down from the elevated buildings to the waterfront, retaining connectivity to the river and protecting the area from flooding. Finally, as we plan for the future of the city, we need to improve our infrastructure and the public realm. Boston has a strong foundation of open space assets, one of the first public transportation systems, and vibrant cultural institutions. However, the quality of these assets varies between neighborhoods. Boston must plan for parks, cultural institutions, and transportation systems that reflect our growing diverse population. When we think about how Boston's open space networks could be transformed, there are opportunities to use great design to spur activity in existing parks and connect neighborhoods. In Chicago, Maggie Daly Park is a new 20-acre public space that connects existing parks to create a continuous open space in downtown Chicago with views of one of the city's greatest environmental assets, its lakeshore. As we consider the future of our transportation network, we can look to cities like Portland, Oregon, where a multimodal, multinodal transit system is helping residents move across the city quickly and reliably. Portland's coordinated land use and transportation policies have encouraged transit-oriented development and resulted in mixed-use, high-density neighborhoods and investment in businesses near transit centers. This type of visionary thinking isn't new to us. We have experienced thinking big. As the city added new jobs and residents in recent decades, we've transformed new areas to live, work, and play, like Boylston Street and Fenway. We've encouraged transit-oriented development in places like Maverick Square in East Boston. We've transformed our downtown by creating parks and places where infrastructure once stood and stitching neighborhoods back together. The city has worked with the private sector and nonprofits in Dudley Square to create a vibrant neighborhood center and an emerging employment hub. And we've also invested in new areas to live, work, and play, transforming areas like the South Boston waterfront into new neighborhoods within the city. As Boston grows, we need new places to live, work, and play to meet the needs of current Bostonians and our growing population. Moving forward, the Imagine Boston team will be working with Bostonians to determine where and how 
Boston should look to preserve, enhance, and grow to ensure that we are an inclusive and innovative city. We need your input to do this work. We are just finishing the second of six engagement campaigns this spring. We'll be coming back this summer to share our strategic vision plan, which will reflect the input we've received from Bostonians to date. You can stay involved in our current campaign by contributing to our digital map or answering text message questions. You can also follow us on social media at Imagine Boss or sign up for our email list at imagine.boston.gov. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to your participation in the Imagine Boston 2030 planning process.